In some previous videos, I proved some of Ramanujan's famous floor formulas. We're gonna prove another one today. So in particular, we will show that the floor of n over three plus the floor of n plus two over six plus the floor of n plus four over six is equal to the floor of n over two plus the floor of n plus three over six. And this is gonna be true for all integers n. And I wanna point out that this is not true if you remove the floor function from each of these summands. Notice here we would have n plus three plus n plus two over six plus n plus four over six, that gives you two n over three plus one. Whereas this lower sum without the floors gives you two n over three plus a half. Those are clearly not the same. Okay, so I've worked out an example to see this in action. The example is when n is equal to 10. So we've got the floor of 10 over three plus the floor of 12 over six plus the floor of 14 over six. So 10 over three is between three and four. So if we take the floor, we get three. It's like an elevator downstairs to the closest integer. 12 over six is an integer, it's equal to two. So the floor doesn't do anything, we get a two. 14 over six is between two and three. So when we take the floor, we get two. But clearly three plus two plus two is seven. We can re-expand seven as five plus two. But let's notice that five plus two is the same thing as the floor of 10 over two plus the floor of 13 over six. And this would be the expression of the left-hand side of our identity with n equals 10, whereas this is the right-hand side of our identity with n is equal to 10. So there, we have shown that this identity at least holds for n equals 10. Okay, so now let's jump into the proof. So we just saw an example when n was equal to 10 that this equation holds. Now we're ready to prove it in general. And this needs to be broken up into four cases, or at least that's how I did it. I don't claim that that's the only way to do it though. At first it might seem like you have to break it into six cases, but you can actually condense that down a little bit. So let's look at our first case. So I'll call it case one. I'll write out what case one is and then we'll talk about how we came up with the choice of cases in the first place. So our first case is if n is equal to 6k or 6k plus one for some integer k. So in other words, n is congruent to zero or one mod six. Okay. So what's the motivation for working with numbers that are 6K plus something in the first place? Well, that motivation has to do with the fact that we have a denominator of six right here. It's not exactly that we have a denominator of six. It's really that the least common multiple of all of the denominators present is equal to six. So that means if we work with an object like this, we can easily determine what two integers the insides of these four functions look like because we can cancel out denominators kind of as needed. Okay, so now that being said, we'll approach these at the same time. So let's maybe get started with this left-hand side. So I'll just rewrite this. So we've got the floor of n over three plus the floor of n plus two over six plus the floor of n plus four over six. So we can summarize n being 6k or 6k plus one maybe with the notation that n is equal to 6k plus something that I'll call delta, where delta is equal to zero or one. Okay, so now let's plug that version of n into our expression. So that's gonna give us the floor of 6k plus delta over three plus the floor of 6k plus two plus delta over six, and then plus the floor of 6k plus four plus delta all over six as well. But now we can split each of these fractions apart. So we've got 6k over three, that is 2k, and then plus delta over three. And then next we'll have 6k over six, that's k plus delta plus two over three. And then finally another k, and this time plus delta plus four over six. Okay, good, and this should be a six right here. 
Okay, next up, we know that all of these things which I'm boxing in green are integers. And so since those are all integers, we can pull them out of the floor function. That's gonna leave us with 2k plus k plus k, in other words, 4k plus the floor of delta over three plus the floor of delta plus two over six plus the floor of delta plus four over six. Now we just need to look at each of those objects. But recall that delta is equal to zero or one. Keeping that in mind, we know that delta over three is bigger than or equal to zero, but less than one. And furthermore, delta plus two over six is strictly bigger than zero and less than one. And similarly, delta plus four over six is between zero and one exclusively. That's because we can never get a numerator of six in any of those fractions. But then that means these numbers inside of the floor are all between zero and one. That, and so they all zoom off to zero as we apply the floor, which means we get 4k. Okay, so we've showed that this left-hand side of our expression in this first case is equal to 4k. Now we'll clean this up and do the same thing for the right side of the expression. We just got done showing in our first case when n is 6k or 6k plus one, that this left-hand side of our expression is equal to 4k. Notice we can put these into one case where n is 6k plus delta and delta is either zero or one. Now we're gonna look at the right-hand side of our equation. So I'll just write that down again. We have the floor of n over two plus the floor of n plus three over six making our substitution with 6k plus delta, that's gonna give us the floor of 6k plus delta over two, plus the floor of 6k plus delta plus three all over six. But now let's do a little bit of simplification. So this is gonna be equal to 3k plus the floor of delta over two. Using the same trick that we did before to split this into two parts, that's integral, so we can bring it out of the floor. And then we will argue that delta over two is between zero and one, so that will go off towards zero. And then similarly, we've got something over here. We've got 6k over six, that gives us a k outside plus, the floor of delta plus three over six. But then again, because delta is zero or one, we know the floor of delta over two is zero and the floor of delta plus three over six is also equal to zero. So putting these two things together, we see that three K plus K is equal to four K, which is exactly what we want to prove our identity in this first case. Okay, so let's maybe clean up the board and we'll look at a second case. For our second case, we'll look at when n is equal to 6k plus 2. So we were able to combine those two things together in our first case. And I think in the last case, you can also combine some things together. But for these middle cases, when we've got 6k plus 2 or 6k plus 3, I think they have to go on their own. Maybe post in the comments if you have a more streamlined proof of this identity. Okay, so let's get to it with this substitution for n. So I'll take my left-hand side and copy it again. So I've got n over three in a floor plus n plus two over six in a floor plus n plus four over six also in a floor. Okay, so making a substitution, that's gonna give me 6k plus two over three in a floor plus, let's see, 6k plus four four over six floor plus the floor of 6k plus six over six. Now we can do some simplification here. Notice this 6k over three will give us 2k. We can pull that 2k out of the floor because it's a whole number. So that gives me 2k plus the floor of two thirds. We can do something similar for that second term. That 6k over six is k. That's a whole number, we can pull it out. And we've got left over plus the floor of four over six, which is also two over three. That last term is an integer itself. So we actually don't have to worry about it. We divide by six and we get k plus one. 
So next up, we can notice that the floor of two thirds is equal to zero. The floor of this other copy of two thirds is also equal to zero. Notice this should have been a one third, leaving us with two K plus K plus K plus one. So in other words, we have four K plus one. Okay, and now let's rewrite that 4k plus 1 as 3k plus 1 plus k and re-expand it in terms of this right-hand side. So let's notice this 3k plus 1 can be rewritten as the floor of 6k plus 2 over 2 because there we've got an even number in the numerator that 2 divides out perfectly. And then let's notice this k right here can be rewritten as 6k plus 5 over 6. And that's because 5 over 6 is between 0 and 1. But this thing that we've arrived at is exactly the expression for our right-hand side. So we've got the floor of n over 2 plus the floor of n plus 3 over 6. So there we've got a self-contained proof that starts at the left-hand side and ends at the right-hand side in this case when n is equal to 6k plus 2. So the other two cases are very, very similar. So I'll leave those as homework. So just to reiterate what we need to do, we need to explore case 3 and case 4 when n is 6k plus 3 or when n is 6k plus 4 or 6k plus 5. And I think these two can be done the same way as our first case. In other words, we could look at 6k plus delta where delta is equal to 4 or 5, or maybe even 6k minus delta where delta is equal to 1 or 2. Then maybe a third question, which is a little bit trickier, is can you find a more streamlined proof, maybe that doesn't have such a reliance on a case-by-case -case analysis? And that's a good place to stop.